Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. In this lesson, we'll talk about how we can subdivide our data for analysis using what we call rational subgrouping. The concepts are pretty straightforward, but it may help to review the previous lessons about variation. Right now, let's begin by defining what we mean by rational subgrouping. Well, rational subgrouping refers to the logical distinction of potential subprocesses that could exist within an overall process. So each of these different subprocesses are usually distinguished or they're going to be grouped by some particular factor or category. So let's go over a few examples. So within your data set, if you have logical breaks between issues like time, that is like a shift or time of day or day of month, then those could represent the different groups or subgroups that you might want to use to identify the different subprocesses within your overall process. Or maybe by location, where you've got things broken out between country or some geographical regions or metro areas or maybe wherever the native languages are. Those kinds of things could help distinguish natural subgrouping that you want to use. Also, uh, maybe by different processes, where you're separating different processes or different methods of the same processes, where you're breaking each of the actual processes and where it's performed or how it's performed or the different types of implications of the process. Those things could represent some, nat some natural subgrouping that you want to reflect within your data. Or maybe people, as far as the, the tenure for folks, their educational level, or, or other kinds of factors you might want to use to distinguish people. Those could represent different subgroups as well. So how do you know if you're going to be needing any rational subgrouping? Well, special cause variation could reveal the need for rational subgrouping. If the same special cause tests tend to fail, then chances are that a subgroup could exist within the process. These refer to the special cause tests that we've gone over before in a separate lesson for looking at control charts and how you can test across eight different possible tests. Well, in that way, if you happen to see that the same tests tend to be failing, then it could be a certain subgroup that naturally exists that you need to account for and, and treat as a subgroup when you're reviewing your data. So non-normal data can sometimes also indicate that some subgroups exist. A non-normal process may be caused by multiple or maybe overlapping normal processes. So what you could do is from a normality plot, you can group your data points for each straight line in the plot to see if a subgroup exists. So as an example, if you have, again, a normality plot like this along a logarithmic scale, and you're plotting your data and looking at the data like this, it reflects a non-normal distribution because we would expect a normal distribution to fall right on the straight line that it's trying to fit. Well, what we might do is we might see there's a certain portion of the data that tends to fall within the straight line, and we might call that a subgroup A, and another portion that does seem to fit a straight line, but you know it looks like it is different. Maybe this is a natural subgroup that we need to split apart from the other set of data. Now, this isn't always going to work perfectly every time, but it could be a good step for where you want to split your data between these, these subgroups. And the way you can test for that is, or how would you know if you've got the right subgrouping? Well, you can use an ANOVA or an HOV, which is also the test for equal variances test. These are the things that we're going to be going over in tools within the analyze phase. But you can use those kinds of tests to confirm if there is a statistical difference between these subgroups. So if you break it out in this such a way as this, and then what you could do is identify that you call all these data points, call that group A, another one group B, or, or however you might want to distinguish between the two different groups that you've distinguished on here. And then you keep the subgrouping only if the statistical difference exists for the ANOVA and the HOV test, that is if you have a low p-value between the subgroups. So you break these out between the two subgroups, you run, for example, the ANOVA test. If the ANOVA test comes back with a very low p-value, again, something that shows that there is a very low risk of proving that there is a difference between these values you're comparing, then chances are they really are separate groups after all. If you don't have a very low p-value at all, then maybe it wasn't the right break in how you're separating or distinguishing between these groups, and maybe it's not appropriate to use rational subgrouping in this way. But if you do see that you have a low p-value after all, then chances are they are a rational subgroup and they are an ideal way to split them apart and maybe analyze them separately. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. We we'll try to identify at least three different metrics that you use in your organization that are using continuous values. For each of those metrics, identify at least three types of subgroups that you're already using for your reporting. 
some of the examples that we had before were breakouts across different groups like by different types of time or location or or maybe uh, within certain types of processes or sub processes what are those subgroups that you're already using within your organization and then next I would ask what are at least two other types of subgroups that are possible within the data although it could be improbable that were realistic in how you'd use it just try to identify what could be two other types of subgroups that you might want to use and then how can you confirm if that's a natural or rational subgroup that should be separately measured what are some ways you can confirm whether those two new subgroups that you identified if maybe they might seem improbable or unrealistic maybe they really are so how, you, how can you confirm whether they really are uh, subgroups or not well that wraps up this lesson check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.